We would yes. be remiss if we didn't talk about Justin Trudeau's blackface, blackface, blackface scandal. I think it's three times now that he's appeared yeah. in blackface. That has come public. He can't even tell us how many more times there are out there. Um, but you were on the ground in Winnipeg on his blackface apology tour. Um, day one. Day one of the apology tour. And you were there when he issued that uh, apology about how all of us need to be better because he wore blackface. What was that like? Yeah, well, I, first of all, I don't need to be better at that, about <laughs> no. subjects like that. Thank you very much. And neither do the rest of Canadians. Yeah. Um, it was a fluke. For, um, look, the whole thing's a fluke. He uh, was already scheduled to be in Winnipeg uh, 2 p.m. on the 4, 2 p.m. on the Thursday. I don't know what he was going to be doing in the morning. Uh, probably, you know, sticking his head into a daycare or something like that. But the major event was going to be an appearance at the Grand Mosque on Waverly in South Winnipeg. Uh, uh, Terry Duguid's riding, um, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, and, of course, Jim Carr, the regional minister, yeah. would have been there, the other candidates. Uh, but this is to shore up uh, 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 Duguid, who's... Uh, I don't know if it's neck and neck. I've, I've heard conflicting stories, but it's generally viewed as a, as a battle to keep that seat. It certainly was a battle for Terry to win it. Uh, and that was scrapped before, uh, before he even got off the plane. The 2 o'clock at the Grand Mosque was scrapped. Imagine uh, after that performance on the plane, <laughs> walking into a mosque. And <laughs> so it was scrapped. And then that morning, uh, and I was already scheduled for uh, my annual physical downtown, and here the notice, and I think it actually might have come from you, that uh, there was an event uh, in downtown. It, you know, it's it's an area that's, you know, part of the greater downtown, but it's its own special area, the Exchange District, just north of downtown. And I get out of the doctor's office, and uh, no bad news, thank God. Uh, and I thought, well, uh, I, guess, uh, I guess I can still kick these guys around for a little while still. <laughs> And I get into the car and I'm two blocks from the street that it's on and like eight blocks north. It's like, how do I not do this? Yeah. Cut up the lane and go. And I'm like right there. Now, the, the press release said the corner of King and Bannatyne. Um, the, and this went on in the Manitoba election, too. So I'm going to make a plea here for all those of you that are organizing candidates, appearances, political appearances for crying out loud. If something is known by a colloquial name, use it. If it's not well known by the colloquial name, some park, then use the intersection. But like if it had said Old Market Square, I think that more people would have actually shown up because they would have understand that he wasn't like inside some business or warehouse or something. I don't think they wanted more people to show up. That's I think an they want. Yeah, I think they wanted just liberal partisans, liberal insiders there uh, because the people are inconvenient right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that day they were. So I, I yeah. scoot on down there and... Uh, uh, the Prime Minister was fashionably late. Uh, I was able to mingle around. I talked with Marianne Mahaychuk, who was very glad to see me. I, I know that uh, this audience might find it hard to believe, but I have a lot of uh, uh, friendly relations for mi decades with many of the Liberal MLAs, or MPs rather, in Manitoba. Some of them were previously MLAs. Dan Mandel was a city councillor. Kevin Lamaru, uh, Robbie Ouellette, uh was very helpful to me in the provincial campaign, actually. So I have a good relationship with the... Um, almost all of the liberal MLAs, uh, MPs rather, in Manitoba from previous previously knowing them. And so I was able to make the rounds and uh, was introduced to David Aiken, who uh, uh, had a good laugh, I think, because of uh, my coverage of uh, the Manitoba election that was certainly, you know, not stuff that the national media would have picked up on, that local point of view. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, this is the first time, if I can give a bit of an overview of the scene, uh, there was a lot less people than I was expecting. I had never been around an event. I met two prime ministers previously, Mr. Turner and Mr. Critchen. Uh, when I, I think Turner was prime minister when I met him, uh, Mr. Critchen was not. He was the uh, 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 lady in waiting at the time. <laughs> but I've never seen that kind of security, which is to say the essentially the, the secret service guys. Yeah. I've never seen security up on a rooftop in Winnipeg and like I'm watching people craning and they're looking I'm going, what are they looking at? I was like oh those three guys there and uh, you know I, I, having some understanding of this kind of stuff I scoped it out so to speak and they were at every exit point and entrance point and um, I made a point of thanking a couple of them because it's thankless service yeah uh, to do what they do and protect 
uh, our our national leaders and uh, the the way it was set up there was like a press row right in front and uh, over the, the the microphone wasn't put like right in the middle of the field the stand so you know about 40 feet 50 feet to the left to the other side of the microphone tom broadback of the winnipeg free press the columnist he hits up that position and i take a look i'm staring right at tom the microphone's like right between us i realize nobody's actually standing here at the three o'clock position and i'm 10 feet from the microphone so i'm not moving uh so i spoke with some of the people around me this is how i ascertained that uh, there was about 35 at least red river college journalism students there as well as uh, about another 70 or so, because I turn to these kids behind me who are like talking about, oh, if I stand over here. And so obviously mm-hmm. James turned his journalism students uh, and they were quite shocked that I knew James. And the first time I met him was at a crime scene looking for, you know, any evidence the cops might have missed, blood splatters or whatever. And uh, I asked them, how many people here do you know? And they said, oh, uh, about 100. Well, OK, and take off 100 media and the various liberals. And there was maybe 100 non non-affiliated disinterested so to speak parties um that were there the prime minister walked up fashionably late uh he was you know it was aside from the day pierre died or or maybe the funeral this is this was the worst day of his life i i have no doubt about that um it took about three or four remarks in before finally uh, when he said that he was asking for forgiveness, then he got a burst of applause. It was small. It was light. And because I was so close to the murderer's row of <laughs> of uh, uh, MPs uh, standing, you know, 20 feet behind him, uh, audibly, I could pick up where the applause was coming from. There's maybe 40 liberals in that crowd. There was no true mania going on whatsoever. Uh, David Aiken asked the most uh, penetrating question. I mean, Larry Cush, the free press was, I think, up second. Maybe he was first or second in Canadian press. And they tried. But when Aiken pointed out that the job of prime minister wasn't invented for you to work out your issues. Yep. And Trudeau just obviously is never considered for a minute stepping down. He's never considered for a minute uh, the best interest of the party. Yep. He's never considered for a minute the impression he is now made as our leader on the international stage uh, by his... Uh, n- nobody cares about what he did in high school uh, in this in this matter. It is perhaps a reflection on his parents, but as it was pointed out to me, it's probably a reflection on his nanny. Because who knows who was, who was taking care of him yeah, at John Rebuff School in Montreal when he was in grade 12. Uh, 1990, dressing up for a sketch, singing... Uh, I don't expect him to have known better. Uh, It is more a reflection on his parents. Notably, when he was asked whether his father knew, he sidestepped that question for about three minutes. And no matter how often the media in Winnipeg said, well, he's asked about what his father Pierre would have said. And they go right to the clip, leaving out his three minutes of baffle gab. And the fact is, he didn't really answer the question. It is, I think, an interesting question, whether his parents knew that he had a habit of dressing up in blackface to be the life of the party. But what it, him doing it at the age of 29 it, uh, demonstrated a, a real gap in his judgment. And uh, to have not talked about it all these years and for it not to come out in candidate vetting, that is what I think has really irked a lot of people, that the liberals jump all over anything about any other candidate from any other party. But when it comes to their own... And they're on leader, nah, not so fast. 